Hello and welcome. This is my first tip for Excel World Cup Boot Camp Day 1. If you haven't already seen the introductory video for the series, go check it out. There's a bunch of links in the video description, including to the playlist for the whole series, which right now is just going to be this video, one other that Giles dropped today in the introduction, but it's going to keep growing to include the whole thing. Uh, I've got a relatively short tip today, but I've also got a bunch of other uh, handy resources to share with you that are going to help with, uh, with this boot camp. So I'm going to use the extra time to talk about those. But first things first, let me introduce today's tip. So the idea is, how many times does A occur in this string? And we'll talk about other generalizations later. Um, and there is not a native Excel function to say count occurrences of this text in that text. Um, and so we have to do a bit of a workaround. So the basic idea is, as an alternative, how much shorter would this string get if you took all the A's out of it? And if it gets shorter by, in this case, five characters, that means that there are five A's in it. And that pretty naturally lends itself to a formulation. So you can say the length of the input minus the length of the input if you replace all the A's with blanks. And you can do that replacement using substitute. Uh, again, if you hopefully you've seen this in the introduction video. If there are any of the functions that I'm talking about here that you don't know, uh, Giles is going to cover the function introductions. So go check out his videos. Uh, they, they might not all be kind of out now, but they'll be out over the course of the week. I think he did actually touch on both length and substitute this morning. Uh, and so that gives you, uh, you take out all the A's, and I'll just kind of show you quickly here. Substitute this for A to blank. That gives you uh, everything except the A's. That is five characters shorter, so you take the length of each of those, take the difference, and that's that's the trick. Like I said, very short trick today. But let's look at a couple of examples to kind of dig into this a little more, and then I'll also show you how it comes up in a, in a couple of battles. So first example, how many emails are in this list? Well, one way to figure that out would be to say every email has an at symbol in it. So you could say len, I just named it emails, len of emails minus len substitute emails uh, at to blank. <clears throat> And you get 17 emails. So, you know, if you ever kind of grab a list of emails like this, and you're trying to figure out how many people are in here, you can do that. How many Gmail addresses? Basically the same idea, except this is going to introduce a twist. So here, when you took out all the A's, it got shorter by five characters. Let's see what happens here when we take out. So again, it's len of emails minus len substitute emails Gmail to blank. So now it gets 35 characters shorter. But there aren't 35 Gmail addresses, there are only 17 email addresses in total. And the reason for that, obviously, is because you're taking out now more than one character. So we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by the len of Gmail. And then you see there's seven Gmail addresses in here. And so every one of those that you take out shortens it by five characters. And so you shorten the whole thing by 35 characters because there are seven Gmail addresses. Uh, just for fun, because I know that there are some people going to be watching these videos for whom this trick is very basic uh, and they already know it backwards. Uh, I've put in an extra one here. Uh, list all the email domains that occur in this list along with the number of emails from each in descending order. So it should look something like this. I'm not going to click over here because there's a formula there. Uh, the important thing is that if you uh, mess around with the data, so let's say I change this Yahoo to an AOL, uh, then this should expand and pick up that AOL. Anyway, that's just just something to keep the uh, the nerds entertained. Uh, okay, so this one then, how many names are in this list? So here we could say, well, every email address has one at. Here, some of the names have, some of the people have three names, or even, there's one case even with four, and so you can't use the space. This is, an, again, a very common use case for this in the real world. Um, and the, what you can do is, as long as you have a consistent delimiter, you can do it based on the comma. So we, here we can say len of names, I'll come back up to the formula bar and do it there, minus len of substitute names, replace the comma <clears throat> with blank. Uh, then the only thing you need to remember is that if there are n names, then there are n minus one commas. So you need to adjust this by saying plus one. So there are 20 names in the list. And again, just for fun for the, uh, for the people who this isn't hard enough for, how many of these names, of these people on the list, have more than two names? Uh, you can play around with that. Uh, again, the, I've just named these as names and uh, and emails. Uh, I will post one uh, solution to uh, to these harder options in the uh, video description. But for now, let's go look at how uh, these come up in in an actual battle. So here is uh, the esports battle three from last year. Uh, this is called laundry time, 
And the first question is, uh, how many of the given piece of clothing, which is these things here, are in the laundry pile, which is these things here. So the first thing you need to do, and we'll talk about lookups more next week if this looks strange to you, is just convert this clothing item into a code. So we're going to look up in here, returning from here. Should have hit lock. Never mind. <clears throat> lock that. Oops, sorry. Too far. Uh, come down here, copy down. So then we just need to know how many of these are in those. And again, that's just the length of this minus the len. Substitute from here, this to blank. And boom, you've just scored your first 60 points in an esports battle. Uh, and interestingly enough, this one also came up in a slightly different way in, uh, in the semifinals uh, of the XL World Championships. There was a question here uh, of, you know, for a list of cases here, uh, you had to assign, you know, A to be one, B to be two, etc., and uh, get the sum of the numbers that correspond to all the letters in the case database. Uh, so I've just listed out all the letters here just to save ourselves a little time. We'll talk about this trick later in the week. Uh, so here we can say, just concatenate all these together into one big thing. The important thing to mention here, and you'll, you'd see it if you kind of work through it both ways, is that substitute is case sensitive. So here we've got uppercase and lowercase letters, but we've only got uppercase to substitute out. We want to treat upper and lowercase the same. So again, we'll talk more about that little change later, but the main thing is now you've got something. So we'll take substitute this, all of these letters to blank. Uh, so you can see that kind of takes everything out. And then same trick as before, we're just going to say len of m2 minus the len of that substitution. Uh, and then you want to put that next to a sequence of 26, multiply these together, add them up, we'll put that back in here, and now you've scored 100 points in the semi-finals of the uh, eSports World Championships. So that's today's trick, uh, won't labor the point any more than that. I do want to spend a few minutes on some great resources that we have to offer. Um, number one, uh, this isn't my offer, but uh, he uh, uh, told me, he's happy for me to share, Peter Charles, uh, who wrote that laundry time case that we were looking at, as well as a bunch of other cases from last year, uh, has made a very generous offer that any uh, new participants uh, in the XL World Cup this year, he is offering uh, coupon codes to the first 10 people uh, to let him know that they're interested in participating that will pay for either free entry to the January battle or uh, $20 toward a season pass. Uh, I checked with Peter a couple of days ago. He said he still had five of those unclaimed. So I recommend you get to him soon. You can find him here on LinkedIn. Uh, second thing to mention is uh, what Giles has put up, and he, he talked about it in more detail in his video. And again, there's a link to this in the video description. Uh, he has a super resource uh, if you're not as familiar with any of the, the kind of basic functions that I'm going to be weaving together in my videos, uh, just called battle functions. Um, it is, it, this is like created from various kind of full stack trainings over the years. There's lots of different kind of, you know, what is the function? What is a straight, you know, plain language exam explanation of what it means? What does it do? And you've got this for like all the text functions we're going to be talking about, all the lookup functions we're going to be talking about, and a few others. There is, there's a ton of great content there. So definitely check that out. And the last thing is we have a generous offer from the Financial Modeling World Cup, the people who organize the, the Excel World Championship uh, and all these esports battles. Because I spoke to Andrew and the FMWC team. I said, you know, Giles and I are trying to organize this boot camp. We think it would be great to try and get more people in. But there's a sort of an intimidation factor. You know, people haven't tried the cases as much. So could we make some more cases available for free? Uh, and they very kindly said yes. So for from now until the first battle on the 26th of January with our uh, with our coupon code, which is bootcamp, all caps, one word, I'll put it in the video description as well, you can get five of the nine Road to Las Vegas cases from last year, which is Bear Island, Laundry Time, What's My Flight Number, Battle Royal, uh, and Fantasy Excel. Uh, so I'll, I'll include the link uh, to the, the shop page that has them here. Uh, you should go get all of them, even if you don't have time to work through them all right away, get them all. Uh, and as as you're learning things from us, you can uh, you can use them. And I will, will tell you, it will take a bit of ingenuity, but this laundry time case, you can do all five levels of that with only the functions that Giles already described in his video this morning, plus a lookup so that you can convert, you know, 
hoodie into H and things like that. Uh, it does take some ingenuity to do it, but that will encourage you to uh, to kind of test yourself and, and see what you can do with those. <clears throat> we'll keep referring back to, uh, to examples from these cases over the course of the next couple of weeks because, again, we want to kind of tie it back to what you're really going to be doing in the battles. So that's all I've got for today. Uh, more tips tomorrow and all the rest of this week. They'll all be dropping uh, at about the same time on my channel and a little earlier in the day on, uh, on Giles' Full Stack Modeler channel for his ones. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you next time.